Well, hello there, guys, and welcome to another To End All Wars campaign, well, episode, I should say, of our campaign. So a lot of things have changed, and we're taking a look here to see how we can improve things. Just looking over here at this particular general, I think I want to actually keep him right here um, in this region and see if we can basically get hooked up with the munitions here. If we can also build a supply depot, that would be great. Uh, and we could also do land bombardment, apparently. Let's see, I don't want to... I'm not very good at the land bombardment, and I don't think I want to bomb the land if I can help it. So we're actually going to hold off on that. Of course, we've got Max von Hausen trying to get back uh, as quickly as possible to the Louvain region. And here we've got Karl von Bülow, who could technically engage this British force. I'm actually going to merge him with this air force, right? Tiny air force, a assortment of planes, I guess you could call it. And technically, if I could bring this guy forward to join von Bülow, um, remember, we control this region, so we could still get supplies here. It might not be such a bad idea. So that's actually what I'm going to do. It's going to take a few days, and I'll see if I could speed that up. We might be able to, because um, we, well, not necessarily. It looks like the rail lines have not been that well fixed in this particular area. Now, over here is where we have a real chance at success. We've got, of course, this particular um, general, uh, Enric, Eric von Falkenheim. And, of course, Eric von Falkenheim is a major, major general. Uh, we could definitely do a lot with him. So what I think we want to try to do is we want to push for Paris. It's that simple. I don't think we'll make it there, but if we can try to push that way, that's probably not a bad idea. So I'm going to go ahead and immediately try to get to Paris. 86 days. Of course, we could probably half that. No, that's 54 days, and the only reason I actually wouldn't do that is because I want him to engage some French armies on the way. So let me actually go to Verdun once again, um, and then we'll go ahead and try to crush the force at Toulouse um, and try to get behind the enemy. Actually, we tried that once before. That didn't work out so well. So let's actually just go here first, um, and then we'll try to get to the Argonne Forest again, sort of retake the area we had before, and with this guy, um, I'm just going to basically hang out. It's Albrecht von Wurttemberg, and he needs desperately to uh, get more men in his, in his army. Uh, he needs to increase morale, and that's going to take a while. I'm going to take the Cavalry Corps and send him to this general, 15 days. Once again, we should be able to lower that, but there's just so much to be done here. It's, it's incredible. Um, we do see some Belgian generals behind us, but they're not actually taking any land, so I'm not really that concerned about them. Uh, but just to make sure, I am going to go to the forts of Namur and try to take them back. Of course, first I want to get Max von Hausen back here um, into an area where he can actually start getting some reinforcements and replacements, uh, but that doesn't seem possible right now. Now let's take a look over here. So we're continuing to try to strengthen that uh, western front, and of course von Hindenburg is here by himself. He's going to have to face a huge amount of reds. Um, so I don't know how this is going to go. Let's hope it goes well. But we're also getting some reinforcements over here, although it's going to take 32 days for these reinforcements to arrive. So I'm actually going to do something that some may not agree with. I'm going to try to go back to Danzig. Um, wait a minute. How can I not get there? There we go. Um, and uh, I think once I get to Danzig, I can actually put up a solid defense. Not really a solid defense, but a defense nonetheless. Uh, and I'm actually going to try to cut through here get behind the enemy. In fact, no. Let me take this general and move him to Danzig as well and form another second defensive front. Uh, some people suggested I do this. I think it's probably a good idea. All right, what else can we do? Uh, Austro-Hungarians are not doing very well, to be honest with you. Uh, we have managed to take a lot of territory here, but I'd really like to improve that even more. So the Schotin Fort, I guess we could wait here and uh, just sort of reinforce our armies for now. But eventually we are going to have to leave this area and actually do some damage to some more regions. So let's see if we can actually grab this guy. We're going to bring him back. Let's see where I want to bring him back to. Yeah, we're going to bring him back here. Same with this general right here. There's just no point in him being here anymore. So we really need to retreat back to an area where he could get uh, some reinforcements. Um, you know, we basically push way too hard into Russia and... In doing so, we, we caused a lot of our generals to lose their men, to lose a ton of morale, a ton of men, just by being behind enemy lines, cut off from a supply line, and that's not good. Now over here, of course, we're still having trouble with the Serbs. What else is new? Um, I'm going to see if we can finally attack them, and no, we still don't have enough attack power to do any attacking, but I'm going to merge these two armies together, and I hope this is going to improve things. I'm also going to send this guy back, try to merge three armies together, and uh, 
we'll go ahead and try to send this guy over here into this wooded area and hopefully take it. Where are our, our beautiful Turkish friends? Yes. So the Turks have joined our side. As those, For those of you that don't know yet, you should definitely be watching the other episodes. Shame on you. Um, but if you already know that the Turks have joined our side, we're going to go ahead and try to bust into Germany, basically. Uh, in, or in Germany. Russia, excuse me. Um, as soon as we can. So I'm actually going to go ahead and uh, take this guy right here. Now someone mentioned to build supply depots whenever possible, so I have been doing that with the Turkish forces. But right here, we might just want to go ahead and get into Kagsiman. Um, and uh, it's going to take a while. Again, getting through this terrain sucks. Uh, the Turkish landscape is really, really tough to move in, and that makes our job a lot more difficult. But I'm going to go ahead and actually, we've got these guys moving up. We've also got this army moving up. And uh, once we get here, it'll be interesting to see how we do. Um, I actually think we want to stay put right now because we desperately need supplies and basically just hang out until we take over this region and can build a supply depot because we're not going to be doing any damage right now. And let's go to our, I like to call it our Palestinian front. And of course, we could start engaging the British. We're actually already moving through their territory, guys. So this is pretty awesome. Um, it looks like Sevat Basha and uh, Kamal Pasha can go ahead and join forces over here and I'm going to keep uh, Mustafa Pasha cutting through the British forces to try to grab these uh, these ports and these harbors. Hopefully it'll work out but you know only time will tell. So here we go guys. And first before I do anything I want to jump into our building list. I actually want to get our Austro-Hungarian friends and troops if we can. Some light infantry. They desperately need it. Um, let's get them some regular infantry as well. I'm not too concerned about our Turkish friends right now because they haven't really seen combat. But once they see combat, they will know the difficulty of our plight. Was that weird? Was that weird? I think it was a little weird. Okay, let's take a look here. Historical options. Political options. Yeah, we don't really have much we can do right now, but just wait, um, essentially. That's the name of the game right now is wait and hope that we break through here. Uh, we've got some major manpower we should be able to do something i hope so anyway um as for carl von bulow like i said i'm not going to order him to attack just because he could receive more reinforcements and he's being supplied here so we're going to let him do his thing all right guys here we go very concerned about von bulow here and I'm hoping, like, he's across a river. That's why I'm really hoping he makes it out of here without the British attacking. Uh, I need to get those reinforcements to him. If we get the reinforcements to him, he might have a chance. Here we go. Von Hindenburg is fighting against overwhelming amount of Russians and, of course, a German defeat. Uh, but you've got to admit, we did a pretty good uh, defense there, killing 16,000 out of 200,000 Russians. Uh, so the Russians have really just come with f absolutely full force here. They're just attacking us with monumental um, amounts of, of, of troops. So at least we can cut down a lot of them at once, and I'm hoping that slowly but surely we can cut those numbers down and make them ineffective in this eastern region. There we go. Nice victory. We finally won in the Battle of Rai Raja. Is that correct? Finally got some action there. And a stalemate in Lome. This is, of course, one of our colonial holdings. Uh, but you've got to admit, we did some pretty nasty damage to the French here, killing 5,330 colonial troops. In fact, some of them are French troops, uh, 1st Regiment de Fusilier Marines, some Marine infantry, and, of course, colonial brigades. All right, let's see how our offensive goes. And I might have to take some guys from the Western Front and shift them to, to the East, um, because this is getting really tough. Um, you know, now they're surrounding Konigsberg. Uh, von Hindenburg's inside. He's trapped. It's tough. All right, a nasty loss there at Festung Lamberg. And this is a battle in Serbia, guys. The Serbian Front. Major battle. And it's an Austrian defeat. We lost 54,000 men in the Battle of Velika Plana. Um, and we killed 8,917 of the Serbs. Now, the only benefit here is that we can see the Serbs are now putting Stepa Stefanovic and Janko Vukotic in the same army. They're running out of generals. They're running out of men. So even though we're getting tremendous losses here, um, it's making sense. The Serbs are great fighters, but we will eventually break through. Okay, so von Hindenburg's actually gotten out, um, as you can see there, of Konigsberg. 
uh, which is kind of interesting. We might be able to pull him back to another defensive line. This kind of reminds me of a World War II Russian attack, and uh, it's worrying me, but hopefully our second defensive line will be a lot stronger than the first. Uh, but it does look like we might be losing Konigsberg for now. Max von Hausen is at least getting some reinforcements now. It does look like von Hindenburg did get some reinforcements as well. And hopefully they'll, they'll get enough to really rebuild their armies, guys, because they were great generals before they lost, you know, uh, hundreds of thousands of men. More like 20 or 30,000 each, but still, that's quite a lot. Get off the trains, get some supplies, some cigarettes, some bratwurst. You can rest now, men. You have fought hard. All right, von Hindenburg's stuck here near Lutzen, and I really want to get him out of here because the worst thing is uh, is him getting trapped. If that happens, we're going to have a problem. We can get over to Danzig and defend uh, the other side of the bridge. That's something we can do, but we can't be trapped. That would just be disastrous. So it looks like the Russians might be just consolidating around Konigsberg. They're not attacking. Now, here we go, guys. This is our offensive, our glorious offensive. It looks like the French have sent a lot of men to defend them. Initially, we started strong, and what happened? German victory, a glorious German victory, guys. We did, however, lose 58,000 men. Hush, hush, we won't talk about it. Um, but nonetheless, we broke through the French lines, killing 22,582 French. Obviously doing a lot of damage here, um, but was it worth it? We'll have to see. So we've definitely taken the forts of Verdun back. Uh, this is an area that we lost, we took, we lost, we're taking it back again. So we'll call this the Second Battle of Verdun, or just the Battle of Verdun. Because um, that would certainly the Battle of Verdun. Here we go again. Oh guys, I hope we can hold out here. Oh my goodness. And we have lost at the Battle of Verdun, men. 74,000 of our glorious German soldiers dying in combat. This was truly the bloodiest day of our entire campaign so far. Killing 22,000 of Maurice Salah's men, but uh, it's not enough. And that's going to be an end to that offensive almost instantaneously. Um, we can only hope that they can recuperate after that and just get the hell out of there as soon as possible. Many, many German dead there at the forts of Verdun. Uh, and we may need to pull back. All right, guys. Well, that was a very, very interesting uh, little situation there. And uh, it looks like we've also got a tech issue here. Uh, what's this? Research. Oh, yes. Okay. Um, so we're going to go ahead and jump over to the diplomatic screen because I want to make sure that we're sending as many diplomats as possible over here. Um, I will take a look here. I'll also try to print state funds if possible. Um, the Hoffman plan might be something we can use pretty soon here. But for now, we're just going to keep trying to get these guys on our side. Well, what else can we do? Uh, and we could definitely get new generals. I'm going to do that for Germany. Actually, I'd like to do it for Austria. Um, and hopefully we can do it for Germany as well. We desperately need more generals, more men, more fighting men. I mean, we've lost a lot just in that Battle of Verdun. Um, but we'll soon figure out whether or not it was worth it. It really may have been. Um, right now, we are technically in control of this region. I could send these guys through to assist. I don't think it would be the greatest idea in the world, but we've got this army right here, um, and maybe, just maybe, this would work. So I am going to attempt that. Josias von Herringen is going to try to relieve the men at Verdun um, and actually still take it. 
I don't know if it's going to work, but we can certainly try. We'll also try to engage this French general right here, uh, just a regular engagement, and uh, hopefully we can take him down. And von Hausen is slowly recuperating. That's what I like to see. And also, it looks like von Hindenburg is also recuperating and might be able to take on uh, the troops of the British over here fairly soon, I'm hoping, anyway. Um, but I'm going to wait for those reinforcements to get there. Anyway, guys, if you have any suggestions as to what to do next, be sure to let me know in the comments down below. It's been a very, very interesting campaign so far. And uh, I must say, a truly vicious fight. Um, you know, it started off where I was kind of like, you know, we, we're actually doing really, really well here. Um, we we're, we might be able to win this. And now I'm sort of of the school of thought of uh, we're in some trouble for sure. We need to be careful. We need to start consolidating our men. We can't just throw our men out there like that on, on crazy offensives. Uh, I think we really need to focus on the defense for now. Um, but we also need to take over Serbia. We need to rebuild the Austrian army because right now it's just not going very well. Um, we, we really need to get these guys back on a fighting track, and, and the key to that is defeating the Serbs. So anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Take care. Have an awesome day. And don't forget to hit that like button, comment, subscribe, etc. Thank you, guys.